Four hundred years. Four hundred years between prophecies of the Messiah's arrival and his entrance. Generation after generation, longing for reconciliation with their creator. Waiting. Yearning. Desperate. Jesus was to be the one to deliver humanity from the sinful trap that relentlessly held it in captivity. All of creation cried out for Jesus to come. Come, Lord Jesus, come.
Silence can seem so empty. But perhaps the emptiest silence means more space for the sounds of heaven to invade and fill. The shepherds were the first to hear of Jesus' promised birth. Imagine humble and overlooked shepherds being the first to hear of their great shepherd from a choir of angels in the previously still countryside. Surely this was the Messiah who was longed for, expected. Oh, worship the King, born to set his people free. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing all the plains And the mountains in reply Echoing their joyous strain Gloria, Gloria, oh, in excelsis Deo, in excelsis Deo. Shepherds, why this jubilee? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the gladsome tidings be? Which inspire your
sing glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Joyful, O ye nations, rise, join the triumph of the skies. We Angelicals proclaim Christ is born in Bethlehem. Hark the herald angels sing glory to the newborn King. Glory to the King. Christ by Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Mighty God. This tiny baby, born into the humblest of circumstances, was all of heaven's greatest promises living amongst humanity's deepest wounds. The hope of every nation. Just as shepherds joined in with the angels, may every heart be awakened and every soul rejoice at the presence of Jesus, the Son of God.
Merry Christmas, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for coming to our carol service online, albeit. And I pray that you're having a really good Christmas time. It's a, a real privilege to be able to bring you God's word today at this Christmas time. And what I really want us to focus on today is hope, hope at Christmas. Because many people have heard about Jesus Christ, but not everyone appreciates why he came and what it means to us. Or we might spend our lives just pushing that to the side. We don't need to think about it now, but we don't know how long we're here for. And so today I really want you to know that Jesus came for a real reason, and it's for you personally. In fact, Jesus said this. He said, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I have come so that you may have life to the full. And what he's saying is, in this world, there is evil destroying it. And I don't think anyone is going to deny that. That evil has come, that Satan, the devil, has come to steal your joy and to steal your eternity. He says, I have entered the frame. I have entered the game to change that. I have come into the game to say no more. I want to give you life to the full. I want to give you life to eternity. Now, we all know why Santa came, don't we? The reality is Santa came to cause parents like me storage problems. I mean, how many presents and how many toys and how many teddies can one child have? And every year I look at it and I think, has Santa got some sort of shares in Ikea? Because I am absolutely certain that that is the main reason he came. But there's another reason. 
You know, when I was younger, I used to get heart palpitations when I heard about Santa. Because my parents used to say to me, if you don't behave, Santa isn't going to bring your presents this year. And I think to myself, hang about, does that mean he can see everything that I'm doing all of the time? I mean, I didn't want to break as my mum, but although I hadn't been good that week, I knew I'd done the month before and almost the whole year ahead. And I'm thinking, what have I done? Santa has seen everything. He can see everything we do. Do you know, I actually have faced that firsthand on a more scary level. I recently went to the dentist, and I went into the dentist, and he'd done all my teeth, checked them, felt good. I walked out, and the person behind reception said, you need to have a hygiene appointment. And I said, okay. And she said, would you like the blonde or the brunette? And I said to her, sorry, could you repeat that? Repeat that. She said, would you like the blonde assistant for the hygiene or the brunette? And I was just a little bit confused, thinking, why would you offer that? And I looked at her and I said, I'm sure they're both as good as each other. And she looked back at me and said, but if you come on a Monday, you can have the blonde. And I looked at her and said, I really don't think it matters. So she said, OK, I'll put you down for the Monday. That was fine. All of a sudden, I heard this little voice behind me say, Mike, and I thought, I recognize that voice. I'm in Dorking. No one really knows me apart from family. I turn around, and sitting in the corner for the whole conversation was my mother-in-law. Can you imagine if I joked and said, oh, yes, I'll have the blonde then if that's all right? She would have killed me. Not that I would do that. Lucky I'm loyal. But the thing is, that was scary knowing that my mother-in-law can turn up at any time. But it gets worse. A few years before that, I went to Sainsbury's, and I was looking around the shelf, and I heard this, Mike, and I turned around. Who do you think it was? It was my mother-in-law all over again. What was I holding in one hand? A pregnancy test. It wasn't for me, but it was for her daughter. Can you see where I'm going? That actually, mother-in-laws see everything. That's scary, isn't it? But here's the thing. There is someone who sees everything who really cares about what they see. That is our loving, heavenly Father who is in heaven, and he loves us. And you're probably sitting there thinking, what do you mean he sees everything? Why doesn't he get a real job? Why is he watching me all the time? If you're a loving father, you care about your children, and you want them to be okay, and you watch over them. And that's what God does, and that is why he sent Jesus to the earth, because he looks upon the earth, and he cares about the destruction on the earth, and the way that it is killing us, and the way that we are causing it, and he wants to do something about it. I don't know about you, but over the last few years, if you could take three words to sum it up, just the last two years then, if you could take three words to sum up what you've seen over the last two years, what would it be? Mine would be death, disease, and division everywhere. What would yours be? Death, disease, and division every year, everywhere. Because we've seen such hard times. We need some hope, don't we? We need some hope in this time. You know, it hasn't all been that bad, though. I've got to be honest with you, there's been fun times in it. I mean, I can remember going into Sainsbury's when the disease thing all kicked off and I sneezed in an aisle. It's the first time I felt like Moses watching the Red Sea part. Everyone in the aisle legged it. And, it, you know, I was in the toilet roll aisle and still people legged it. And I'm thinking, this is at a time when there's a bog roll shortage. And I'm thinking, if you just want to get your bog rolls, just sneeze in the aisle. People legged it. It was good fun. But, you know, the interesting thing is there was other times where I found some fun in this time that's been very difficult. There was a time where my wife kept saying to me, Mike, you need to take a lateral flow test. I said, look, I've taken one every day. Can I have a day off? She said, you need to take another one. I looked at her sitting at the table. I looked at the lateral flow, and I thought, I could have some fun with this. I saw the crayon pot sitting above the microwave, and I thought, I wonder if she's noticed. So I just got the red crayon and added an extra line in on the lateral flow. I said, oh, Rachel, you wouldn't believe what's happened and she said, what? I said, look at this. She goes, you've got COVID. I said, yeah. She goes, hang on a minute. That looks a little bit like crayon. I said, oops. And she looked at me. So it hasn't all been that bad in this time. There is funny moments and times for us to enjoy. But here's the thing. 
there has been a difficult time and it has been really hard. And even when we've got all of the things we're told, we, you know, we've got shortage of toilet rolls, we've got shortage of fuel, uh, we're told we can't have Christmas parties unless you live at number 10 in Downing Street, you know, all of these things going on, it can seem pretty hopeless, can't it? It can seem like there is no hope and that we just need something to pick us up and there's all these things going on. We're thinking, Lord, what are you doing? That is why God sent Jesus Christ. We love to live in a world where we think everything's going swell. We've got money, we've got cars, and everything's going really well. I've got a degree in this and a master's in that, and life is amazing. But actually, all this time has done for us is to make us realize that no matter how successful you are, how much money you have, your life is vulnerable and it is temporal. And that is why God sent Jesus Christ to the earth and we celebrate him at Christmas. Because he knows that there is only one answer to us living beyond this life. And that is in Jesus Christ. He knows that there is only one hope for the world. And that is in Jesus Christ. Because there's nothing in the world that will take us into eternity but Jesus Christ. That is why we celebrate him at Christmas and at this time. I want you to know that Jesus is the most precious thing that God has. It is his one and only son. That must tell you why you're so precious, because he was willing to send his one and only son to die on the cross so that you can live for eternity. That says that our Father in heaven loves you so, so much. When God looks down on this earth, he looks at it and he sees the devastation. He knows that we've caused a lot of the devastation and he knows that it's out of control. And he could just throw us away and get rid of us and get rid of the earth and he could just start again. But he loves us so much, so much that he would send his one and only son who is perfect and sinless. And this is what Jesus said when he came. He said, anyone who believes in me will live even though they die. He was saying, that even though everyone on the earth has done things wrong, we've all done wrong. I, I don't know about you, but you might be sitting there thinking, I'm quite a good person, really. But if you really ask yourself about the things you've thought about others, the things you've done in your life, are you really that perfect? But God is perfect. And a perfect being in God cannot be with things that are imperfect. One would ruin the other. And I can say that God is so perfect that we would be destroyed in his presence. So in order for us to be able to come into his presence, he sent his sinless and perfect son to the earth so that when he died on the cross, he would pay for our sins, the things we've done wrong, so that his blood would become an exchange for us so that we would give him our sin and he would give us his righteousness. His blood is his righteousness. And that would cover us so that we could go back into a perfect relationship with God again and receive eternal life. And in that eternal life, there would be no disease. There would be no suffering. There would be nothing wrong at all. There would be no bog roll shortage in heaven. In heaven, you will never have to fight over a toilet roll, I can tell you that. But God made it possible by sending his one and only son to the earth. I don't know about you, but many people are obsessing over a vaccine right now to save their lives. That tells me that most people in this world, I think, what is it, 80 odd, 90% in this country have taken a vaccine. That tells me that they value their life so much that they would take a vaccine. Well, here's the thing. If we value our earthly life that much, why don't we value our eternal life even more? And that is the question for you today, that Jesus came so that you can have not just a longer physical life, but he came to the earth to break the hold of evil on the earth and to give you the opportunity to have eternal life. You know, there was a man in 1837. This man's name was Robert Cocking. And he thought it would be a really good idea to make a homemade parachute. So he made a parachute. And it kind of looked like an upside down umbrella. And he tied it to the bottom of an air balloon and up it went. He calculated everything, including how much he weighed. He weighed 90 kilos. He was really old. He must have been in his 80s. And so he went up. And just before he went, he said, I've calculated everything. I'm 90 kilos. And he took a swig of wine. He said, cut the ropes. Here we go. All I can tell you is that man's life came crashing down to the ground very, very quickly. 
because he forgot to calculate the weight of the parachute. It's a true story. He didn't calculate the weight of his assurance. And the question I have for you today is, in all that you've calculated in your life, have you calculated everything? Have you calculated the very assurance that you need, not just in this life, but in the next life? You probably have a pension. If you have a pension, you've thought about what you want to live like when you leave work one day, when you get older. So what assurance have you calculated beyond that into eternity? I want you to know that the reason Jesus came at Christmas is to be your assurance. Not only did he come to be your assurance, But he came to be even more than that. He came to give you an eternal hope. An eternal hope is not in a vaccine. An eternal hope is in Jesus Christ, God's son. He did that for you because he loves you. Because he looks at the earth, he says it isn't perfect and no one lives forever. But I made you to live forever. And I'm sending my son to bring you back into my family because the devil took you away. But I'm bringing you back in. And I wonder today if you're sitting there thinking, I want to have God in my life. You can have that in Jesus Christ. He is only a prayer way. If you are to sit there and say, Lord, I know that I've done wrong, but I believe in Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe he died for my sins. And Lord, so I am sorry for the things I've done wrong. I want to receive your forgiveness. I want to have Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, come and live in my heart. And I want to live for you forever and to live with you in eternity. If you pray that prayer today in Jesus' name and say amen, you will become a Christian. And I can tell you that you will have eternity. You will live forever. And where you're going, Jesus described it as paradise. And he says, it doesn't matter what you've done wrong. If you are sorry and you believe in me and you now live for me, eternity is yours. And all disease, all death, all division, all bog roll shortage is gone. That's the hope that Jesus gives you at Christmas. I pray you will respond. Merry Christmas. And thank you for joining us this Christmas at Rygate Baptist Church. All glory and honour and praise be to the King of kings and Lord of lords. From heaven to Bethlehem to our hearts, may we forever be in awe of who you are and the journey you took to bring us reconciliation with our Heavenly Father, Jesus, the name above all names. Should nothing of our efforts stand, no legacy survive, unless the Lord does raise the house in vain, its builders strive. To you who boast to Tell me, what is your life? A mist that vanishes at dawn. All glory be to Christ. All glory be to Christ our King. All glory be to Christ. His rule.
King. Oh, glory be to Christ. His rule and reign will ever sing. Oh, glory be to Christ.